the place. Most any stock car race any weekend afternoon. Stock cars, Fords, Mercury's, Dodge's, Clements. Cars that look like the one you drive, but hand-tooled, worth approximately $25,000. Built to race at 200 miles an hour. Why do the men who drive them risk their lives week after week? For glory, for one thing, and for purses that often total over $100,000. This is the two and two-thirds miles of slick concrete they call Talladega. And this is the running of the first Winston 500. Hi, I'm Bill Smith, president of R.J. Reynolds Tobacco Company. I'm talking to you from the pit row of the International Speedway at Talladega, Alabama, the world's fastest auto racing track. Today we're here for the first Winston 500 stock car race. Our sponsorship with the Winston 500 is a demonstration of our interest and desire to bring you the best in sports entertainment from America's best tasting cigarette, Winston. Let's go back to Tuesday, May 11th. Cars begin arriving. But getting your car to the infield garage area is just the first step. You build it, rebuild it, tune it, and retune it with skill, experience, and instinct. And then the test run. Get the feel of the car on this particular track, the world's fastest. How can you win at Talladega? We ask Neil Castle. His answer, by drafting, tailgating at 200 miles an hour. A race car creates a vacuum behind it as it moves. Catch that vacuum, and you'll be pulled along faster than you can go yourself. Drop out of the vacuum at the right moment, and you'll be thrown past like you've been shot from a slingshot. Richard Petty knows a lot about drafting. When it comes down to the end of the race, you just, uh just a little lucky if you can catch a draft and get by and you win the race. If you don't, you win second. Donnie Allison doesn't intend to run second. He's been picked to pilot the Wood Brothers number 21. Donnie's older brother Bobby will be piloting Mercury number 12. How does it feel to race against your brother? Well, the worst thing about racing against Donnie is just he's probably one of the most talented guys I know. I have more confidence in him than I do a lot of the people, and this makes us race each other a lot closer. I want to win, and he wants to win, so it just amounts to a tough race any way you go. A tough race any way you go. Wednesday, May 12th. Fans are on hand to watch the top cars qualify. The car that rounds the track in the fastest time will win the coveted number one pole position. Out in front of the pack when the race begins. Richard Petty draws fifth starting position. National champion Bobby Isaac, holder of the world speed record at this track, takes the number two spot. Donnie Allison makes his bid. Around the track in well under one minute, just over 185 miles an hour to take the very important pole position. Bobby Allison takes third position. Friday, May 14th. There's still fierce competition for every remaining spot in the starting lineup. These are men who know they lack the top-notch equipment, but they're the sport's backbone, and they'll work hard and race hard for the love of the sport. Walter Ballard of Houston. Just got out and wanted to beat everybody, so I did a pretty good job in Houston and uh, set some new track records there and won a lot of trophies and would love to win the Rookie of the Year. So. Here I am working uh, night and day getting the car ready because I'm running all the races, making every race I can. Well, on this track here, they if you run uh, with the fast boys, it's going to take a lot of tires. And I want to finish in the top 10, but I won't be running with the problems. I'll be running to good pace and looking for the checkered flag to come out and hope I'm still there when it does. That night at the pre-race banquet, James Hilton, car number 48, tries to relax. But he never stops thinking about those 500 miles. Really, what, uh, what do you think that your strategy will be in the race tomorrow, really? Uh, well, it's hard to determine. Uh, like I said, I ran with Allison out there at 187 today. I think it's the fastest anybody's been on the track this week. And uh, the car was performing real good. And if I can run that good in the race tomorrow, I'll go all out and uh, try to run with them. 
the speeds we're running here. The car vibrates and shakes so bad at that speed that you can't actually tell when the tire's tore up. So you can be running on a worn out tire or a cut tire and not even realize it. So anytime, uh, I'm speaking for myself, anytime I get a caution, I'm coming in and get the tire. Because I don't think there's nobody brave enough to sit out there and ride on these tires just to try to lead the race, even for $200 or that. Saturday, May 15th. Rain can drown out the high spirits of a real American parade. But the drivers watch the sky. Precious moments of practice are being lost. If only the sun would come out. And then, it's May 16th, 1971. The sun is shining, and there are 188 laps to go, 500 miles at near 200 miles an hour, on stock car's biggest track for one of stock car's biggest persons. All the color and pageantry of big time stock car racing, America's fastest growing spectator sport. Last minute preparations, final adjustments. Richard Pettit is a favorite to win. If he does, he'll be well on the way to being the sport's first million dollar prize winner. I tell you, that when they say you're favored to win, it really doesn't mean a whole lot because it's uh, hard to go out and tell the car that uh, you're the favorite you're supposed to run the fastest. Best starting position, car number 43, Frank Pettit. Pettit is third starting position, Richard Pettit. The odds, the guesswork, the favorites to win. When the call goes out, Gentlemen, start your engines. None of it means a thing, and it's anybody's race. One of today's favorites, national champ Bobby Isaac, is out sick. Young Dave Marcus has been picked to drive the big Dodge number 71. A great break for Dave. The pace car, piloted by Alabama's first lady, Mrs. Cornelia Wallace, takes the field around the track twice. She pulls the pace car off the track. And there's the green flag. Average speed per lap is 192 miles per hour. You travel the length of a football field in less than one second. And I see they come into the third turn now. Donnie Allison out in front, Bobby Allison is second, Buddy Baker is third, and Richard Petty is fourth, Dave Marcus is fifth, Pete Hamilton is sixth, Pedro Ransom is seventh, as they come to the fourth third and coming down, $100 to the gentleman who leads this round, and here they come.
Starting from fifth position, Richard Petty in the sky blue Plymouth moves up quickly through the traffic. But at 42 laps, barely 100 miles into the race, a blistered tire sends him into the wall and out of the race. Bringing out the caution flag. Use the timeout. Pile into the pits for new tires and gas. Timing and teamwork, vitally important. One mistake, one pit stop too many, and you lose all chance of winning. With Petty out, four men will duel for the checkered flag a lap ahead of the rest. Petty's teammate, Buddy Baker, number 11. Dave Marcus in the lead and hungry for his first win, number 71. Donnie Allison and his older brother, Bobby. the turns banked at 33 degrees. With G-forces pushing you down into your seat, it feels like this. After lap, mile after mile. 42 times the lead changes hands. Cars drop out. Others go into the pits for unscheduled services.
tailgating at near 200 miles an hour is tricky. In a vacuum behind a faster car, your car heats up. Keep it up one lap too long, and your car can overheat and burn. That's the leader, Dave Marcus. Only six laps, 15 miles from victory lane. For five endless laps, the yellow flag holds back the pack. The Winston 500 could end under the caution flag. But with one lap to go, the green comes out. The race is on again. Throttles to the floor to get that lead. At 190 miles an hour, it'll all be decided in a few better seconds. Donnie Allison is out in front, with Baker and Bobby Allison just seconds behind him. Neck and neck, Baker and Bobby Allison close on the leader. One mile to go. A half mile to go. Donnie Allison holds his lead and wins. His brother Bobby takes second. A tremendous race with the race right down to the wire. And we're waiting the winner here in Victory Circle. And the Witt brothers are all over the car. OK, let's give him a big hand. He can hear you now. For Donnie Allison, it means the Winston 500 trophy and over $30,000 in prize money. Presenters. Bill Smith, president of R.J. Reynolds Tobacco Company, and Postmaster General Blount. For the 49 other contenders, well, there's always the next Winston 500.